man down. Spin move. Hacked. Is, and that type of physical play is what you will see. A little scrimmish. And welcome to the Battle of the Old Mountain Jog, gentlemen. Wow. That's all I can say right now is wow. About the trainer. Hall with a rebound. A stop. Well, Sinclair, a freshman, he'll take his first shot. Buries it. For three. Nylon and a foul. A new nylon from deep little Jackson. Bounce. Drive, Matumbo. How astonishing is he? An and one. Spin move, jump hook, off the window, count it. It's all part of a rivalry. These two teams just don't like each other. It's plain and simple. This crowd is absolutely raucous right now. The chippiness, the feistiness, the rivalry continues here in the Ramsey Center. You better believe he will knock that mug down. For that time, call from way outside. You better believe it. Guy won't go Sinclair Skies for the rebound. He'll try one of his own. Bang! That doesn't show you the intensity of this game. I'm not sure what does. And we welcome you to the Ramsey Center. And what a raucous environment we have here today. And Philip, this game, as we've seen before, physicality will rule the day. Absolutely, Kyle. It's just like we saw last year. It may turn a little bit chip chippy at times. This is a rivalry game. So look for this game to be physical, especially down low. Western's going to have to play physical because they are undersized. So look for this to be game to be won or lost in the, in the paint and on the glass. And for the Catamounts, Trey Summer has a lot to do. He didn't really get going against Illinois, but his career against Appalachian, he has thrived in this environment. Absolutely. This meeting last year on senior night right here in the Ramsey Center, Trey Summer uh, racked in 27 points. It's a rivalry game. You know he's going to get his numbers. He also reached the 1,000 mark last week against Illinois, or earlier this week, excuse me, against Illinois when he eclipsed the 1,000 point mark. And he's become the 40th player in Catamount history to do that. So you know Trey Summer's going to get his points. In a rivalry game, Appalachian, Western Carolina, it doesn't get much better than this, folks. A almost packed house on a Saturday afternoon from the Ramsey Center. And along with Phil Jackson, I am Kyle Rush. We welcome you to the Ramsey Center. In a moment, we'll join Monica Papworth, who will be on the sideline for today's action. And we will pause for your starting introductions. And with that, we are about ready for basketball. And this game promises to be one for the ages. And we have seen the past couple of years, this game has gone right down to the wire. 
Yeah, a couple years ago we had the game-winning shot by Mike Williams right here in Culloway, and last year it was a very tight game throughout the game before the Catamounts finally pulled away late. So like you said, it's a rivalry game, so anything goes, Kyle. It may be the holiday season, but Phil, I can assure you there will be no giving away of any type of presidents here. This will be a fantastic basketball game, and we will get to Monica Pappleworth on the sideline as the crowd frenzy. How does Appalachian State handle that? Thanks a lot, Monica, and we are underway. King down low, almost has it stripped, turn around way short. And loose ball, Healy with a rebound, and Price, a big part of Appalachian State's offense in this game a year ago. Absolutely, he racked in 21 points last year, and he was really the X factor for the Mountaineers in last year's matchup. And already, <laughs> Appalachian State and Panty on the board, a big bucket for them early on to try to take the crowd out of the ball game. Yeah, and that's what he does. He's, he's their leading scorer at 18 points per game, and he had 29 against Missouri earlier this week. So he's going to get his numbers, and he does that by getting inside. Tankowitz now pump fake. Summer will bring it out top. Into King again on the elbow. Tankowitz comes around. 4-3. In and out, won't go. Rebound, Summer on the inside, and he's tangled up with Obacha. And I believe we'll have a jump ball, but anytime you see your point guard getting among the bigs, it's a good sign if you're looking for good performance on the glass. And well, that's, that's the kind of effort Larry Hunter's gonna have to have from his catamounts because they are undersized. So it's gonna take a team effort tonight in order to hang up, hang with these Mountaineers because they are so superior down low. Catamounts in a man-to-man -man defense to start out. Nice try, but he walked he with it. And the crowd's going to let them know about it. Appalachian State's first turnover. And that's what the Catamounts need to do. They need to force turners. They've been doing that all year, and it's paid dividends for them. Sumler will bring it up. He gives a sign to Preston Ross in the backcourt and now delivers the play to the offense, Appalachian State. Also in a man-to-man -man defense to start out the ballgame. And Kyle, Tom Tankowitz has been very active so far. They've, they're running a lot of ball screens for him, trying to get him into the rhythm early. King going to work. Going right at the freshman and he draw a charge. Obacha draws the charge and his first time in this game, he has looked sharp, especially defensively. Yeah, and he's got his hands full. I mean, he's guarding the big man Tawaski King down low, but that's that's not very smart by King. You are way too important to this Catamount roster to be picking up your first foul, not even two minutes in, especially of that caliber where you draw, you gotta make it look better than that. You can't just lower the shoulder and knock over the guy. Well, remember this game a year ago, Tawaski King Along with Isaac Butts, Appalachian State's big man in that game, both in foul trouble early and often in that game. It'll be interesting to see how the bigs do here. Obacha now will swing it out. Long shot attempt off the back iron, won't go. Offensive rebound will lead to a bucket and they might call goaltending here as well. And I'm not sure what the word is yet. They have not put any points on the board. As the officials will talk about it, they're talking with Tom Tankowitz as well. Over there on the far side at the 1801 mark. Appalachian State up 2 nothing, And Healy for the Mountaineers to go to the line to shoot two. And it's, it's quite obvious what uh, Coach Jason Capel is going to do today. He's going he's gonna to use his size advantage. As we've seen so far, we haven't seen an outside shot. It's all been inside. They're going to take it to the Catamounts. They're going to make the undersized Catamounts figure out a way to defend the oversized Appalachian State. They do count the bucket. It's a 5 nothing Appalachian State lead. And if you're Coach Cable, this is the exact start you wanted from your ball club on the road. Absolutely, and Appalachian State has caught a lot of grief so far for being one and six, but remember, those losses came to Missouri, Virginia Tech, and Duquesne, teams that you will see in the NCAA tournament later on this year. So despite being one and six, this is a tough ball club. Uh, Tankowitz will get the Catamounts on the board. A nice pass that time from King. And the little fella snuck away underneath, and Tankowitz a player 
who has really filled the role of Keaton Cole very well early on this year. Absolutely, and that was a question mark coming into the season because last year he had some confidence problems and really didn't shoot the way that Coach Hunter and the rest of the Cowboys knew he could shoot. But he snapped out of that quickly when he first game opened night against UNC Asheville in the Kimmel Arena. He, he hit five three-point shots, and so it was evident that he, he's going to have that type of season. And especially when you lose a three-point sh shooter like Keaton Cole, it's great to be able to replace that with someone like Tom Tankowitz. And whistles, we have an issue with the shot clock. So they'll get that fixed. Larry Hunter coaching up his defense, and Appalachian State has done a very good job, as you mentioned, getting it inside early and often with Obacha and Healy, they really can get it down low. Yeah, and I'll, you know, why not? I don't blame Coach Capel one bit. You have the size advantage, so I would take it in there. Tawaski King's already picked up one foul. I'd take it to him, see if I could get the big fellow on the bench early with two fouls. Catamount sick in a man to man. They get it down low again. Turnaround jumper won't go somewhere to the board. Catamount's down three. Looking to answer an early Mountaineer run. Somewhere going to work. Long pass, Tankwitz over to Ross for three. Back iron won't go somewhere on the offensive glass before Obacha finally corrals it for the Mountaineers. And offensive foul. A good move by Price, but he can't use the forearm. Anytime you stick the, you extend the forearm like that, they're going to get you. Speaking as an official, that's what we look for. Anytime you extend the arm, you're getting hit with it. And early on, the physicality of this game is evident. And in the battle for the Old Mountain Jug hardwood style, you expect nothing less. Rivalry game, Kyle. You said it right there. Appalachian versus Western. It was already chippy at the beginning of the game, as you noted. An Appalachian player ran into Trey Summer. Things got chippy early on, so expect that for the rest of the day. Twosky King doubled down low. Dribbles out of trouble. Finds Sinclair. Sumler now to work with 13 on the shot clock. And Neuross, low block. Turns around with eight. Now he goes to work, seven. Nice spin move. How nice of a move was that? Preston Ross doing all the work on the low block. And that was a good move. He just he had the size advantage. For once, a Western player had a size advantage, and he took it through it. But that's what Preston Ross gives you. He's the bruiser. He's going to be found in the middle, getting the loose balls, getting the rebounds, and getting the garbage buckets just like that. Backboard cut was blocked by Sumler. Now they can't make the layup, and here come the Catamounts the other way. Sinclair will try three. Won't go. And out of bounds to the Mountaineers. And we will take our first break. Catch your breath, folks, because this game's fast-paced. Mountaineers lead 5-4 early on here at the Ramsey Center. And we welcome you back to the Ramsey Center. And early on, Catamounts have not shot the way they would normally or like to from the outside, Phil. And, yeah, and that could be a problem because we know how much the Catamounts rely on their outside shooting. However, Tom Tankowitz, he missed his first shot, not a big deal. James Sinclair missed the open look, not a big deal. This is a team that is capable of, once they see the first one go in, it's infectious, Kyle, and they all start hitting, and they are capable of going on 10-0, 12-0, 15-0 runs. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned about it yet. They will start falling. I think the positive sign you got to take is Tankowitz, the guy that has his two points came from and inside layup, so the Catamounts have worked the interior offensively as well. And here's Boggs with a steal as he has checked into the ball game. Tankowitz getting it down to Ross, will work on Obacha, cross-court pass. Sumler can't handle it, and it goes out of bounds to the Mountaineers. And so often in games like this, turnovers, not necessarily this one other than a change of possession, but turnovers that lead to points turn huge and can really swing momentum of a ball game. Yeah, and that's crippled Western to this point this season. I feel like I was in I was in attendance for the UNC Asheville game, and they lost that game by 10 points, but they turned it over 23 times. You can't do that and expect to win, especially this game. I believe is going to come down to the final. You know, whoever's got the ball last, it's going to come down to the wire. So these little things, missed free throws, turnovers, they're they're going to add up, and they become big factors in this game. Appleton State brings it back out. Burgess over to Healy. Three ball way off the mark, won't go. Ramsey crowd will let them know about that, but it Jay falls Canty. right into Canty's hands. And when you're a scorer like he is, you just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, and he's been doing that all season, averaging 18 points per game. That's what he does. He gets inside and he makes things happen. King going to work, spin move, jump hook with the right hand off the window, count it. 
And back and forth they go at the 14-19 mark. 7-6 Mountaineers lead early on. And that's huge for the Catamounts and Tawaski King. Being undersized, if you're able to establish some sort of inside game, that's going to open up the outside shots for Tankowitz, Sinclair, Bog, Sumler. So establishing an inside presence is key. Canty, another phenomenal move. Give him six early points in this one, proving that he'll be a factor for the Catamounts and the Mountaineers offensively. King now in the elbows. They look to slow it down. Tankowitz thought about taking a look. Now he'll drive a little teardrop, a little nylon. And that might be where Tankowitz has the advantage over Keaton Cole from a year ago. Yeah, Tank Tankowitz is a little bit taller, a little bit quicker, a little bit more athletic. But because of his shooting ability, Appalachian State's going to respect that. And so as you saw right there, Tom gives him a little pump fake. Whoop, got the guy up in the air. Go right around him. Got an easy basket for two. Drive took on about three Mountaineers, or Catamounts rather, and Obacha is going to get hacked with over the back on Chawaski King. And these players, especially, we see Trice there driving to the lane. They're lowering his shoulder, and they are taking no prisoners here tonight. Absolutely. It's physical, Kyle. Physical, physical, physical is how this game is going to be played. Mendenhall will check in. A lot of people really like this guy. The transfer, a lot of hype adding size to that Catamount roster. Yeah, the kid's 6'8". He's a little on the skinny side, but he could be a big part of this Catamount roster, especially with the Catamounts being not so deep on the inside. Mountaineers match Healy up on him. Swing pass, King back door, lost the handle, but he's fouled. And will go to the line, and if you're Appalachian State, a good foul is King was ready for the right-handed throwdown. Yeah, I, I, I like that right there. For me, back when I used to play, I'll give you the two shots at the line, but you're not getting an easy basket like that. And it's actually not a bad, bad foul considering the Catamounts are only shooting 66% on the season from the charity stripe. It's not a bad foul. Well, but remember, too, Trawaski King, the big free throws he hit in overtime of that Davidson game a year ago. He has shown that he can make them in big time situations as he knocks down the first. But you talk about how even this game's going to be throughout. How about through the first four minutes, both teams two of seven from the floor? Yeah, these teams are like twins, Kyle. <laughs> they, they they are behind or in front of each other in every I mean, Western's third in scoring, App's fourth in scoring in the SOCON. They're both averaging 72 points per game. I mean, every stat line, there's just decimals separating the two teams. So these two teams are, are spitting image of, of images of each other. Hamilton, Hamilton will hit the triple and give the Mountaineers a three-point lead, 12-9 the score. Tankowitz going back to work. Obacha out of the ball game, and he can't get it to go. Boggs the offensive rebound, and that's a lot of the play they've been missing from that young man early on this season. Yeah, Boggs for the most part has been non-existent this season. He's, he was a big piece last year and, and could be so huge this year in his role. But he's really just struggled with shooting. I don't know if it's a confidence factor, if he's not getting the touches that he, he's used to. But that's a good sign seeing Boggs get involved early. I also like uh, Tawaski King developed a little uh, spin move hook shot deal uh, this on the offseason. We didn't see a lot from him. He could do that last year. and He looks to have worked on his offensive game. Healy takes Sumler to the rack and lays it in. But you saw Obacha's out for the first offensive series and the Catamounts going inside. Mendenhall lost it on his way up. He got too far under the basket. Now the Mountaineers on the break. They'll take advantage. And that's what we talk about, turnovers leading to transition points. And now Sumler will slow it down for the Catamounts. Sumler looking to post on the inside. He's got Burgess on his back. Swing pass, King. Tankowitz for three. Nylon! He sickles the twine. And the lid is off the bucket for him from beyond the arc. Count and it's just like that, it's a two point ball game. You give the man an open look right there, he's gonna make you pay. Canty will try to answer with one of his own. He does. Back and forth they go. Canty saw Tankowitz's three pointer. He said, hey, I'll raise you one of my own. And Canty might have had the tougher look of the two fade him away from the basket. Some little drive, crossover dribble, fade away, splash. 
his ability to create offense is just superb, and as a defense, there's not a whole lot you can do. Trey Sumner creates something when there's just not anything there. He can make something out of nothing, and that's just what you love to see from your point guard. Canty will try to drive on Boggs. Boggs there defensively, wide open, three-point attempt, won't go. I think he got away with the walk right there, Kyle. He shoveled his feet a lot to, to gain his composure before shooting that basketball. I think he got away with a little bit of a travel. That'll take us to a timeout. The 10-16 mark, Mountaineers 19. The Catamount 16 here in the first half on Catamount All Access, presented by TV 62. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center as you look at the banners that hang high above for the schools from the Southern Conference. And speaking of the Southern Conference, Appalachian State, their first conference outing, coming on the road much like Western Carolina's when they took care of Furman on the road. A big game for them to get off to a hot start in the Catamounts. If they could go 2-0 in the conference, that would be huge. Absolutely. Western already finds themselves, despite being 3-6, they find themselves at the top of the Northern Division which is a tough division as it is. A lot of people don't think the SoCon is as competitive as it is. You've got Davidson, who's already knocked off Vanderbilt and West Virginia. You've got College of Charleston, who's already taken down Baylor. And you've got Elon, who's already knocked off South Carolina. So this is no longer a weak conference that is used to, for these bigger schools for warm-up. This is a legitimate conference. And don't forget, Appalachian State gave Virginia Tech about all they could handle. And the Catamounts did almost everything but win in Champaign, Illinois a couple nights ago. Sinclair, fadeaway jumper, splash. And if he starts shooting the ball like that, he can really get heated up and explode for this offense. Absolutely. And to add on to what we were saying about the conferences, it's kind of unfortunate that this conference only receives one automatic big, and that's whoever wins the tournament. But I mean, they're year in and year out, we see Davidson, Charleston, Elon, sometimes Western. Last year, UNC Greensboro got hot. There are teams in this conference that could go to the NCAA tournament and win a few games. So it's kind of unfortunate. That's just what makes it so competitive, especially how important and how crucial that SOCON tournament is. Trice, a nice feed. They missed the dunk on the inside. And Ocom, that's something you absolutely cannot do in a rivalry game like this on the road. Got to take advantage of the easy ones now, Sinclair. Absolutely, and the hooligans, Hunter's hooligans are all open for that one. Tawaski King going back to the table for the Catamounts. He'll check in. Next dead ball. As Summer pulls it outside, Mendenhall, he has a free lane. Pull up, jump shot off the window, won't go. And Sinclair tried to stuff it home, now he gets the rebound. Sinclair for three, bam! He didn't make the play underneath, but he got his basketball back and then made him pay. That a way to not give up on a play. You missed the, you missed the easy dunk, that's okay. Keep your head in it, keep hustling. You poke away, cause a steal. Nobody comes out on you, knock down the three point shot. He turned a negative play into a positive play. Catamounts take their first lead of the day at 21-19. Appalachian State tries to make him answer. Somewhere in on the glass, tips it to Tankowitz. Catamounts want to run. Pullback, somewhere for three more. Short iron, no good. And a good defensive rebound. And if you're Appalachian State, you have to get your feet back under you a little bit. And as you say that, Michael Obacha going back to the scorer's table for the Mountaineers. Yeah, and they kind of got away with, with what was working with for them at the beginning. I'd go back inside if I'm Coach Capel here. You, you were getting pretty much what you wanted down low. You got the seven-footer Ocam in there now. I'm going to start pounding it down low. Make the Catamount stop you inside. Especially with Tawaski King not on the floor at the moment. Trice pulls it out. The Mountaineers going to slow it down. Somewhere the seal. And they're going to say he was out of bounds. And a close, close play that time for the Mountaineers because Tankowitz was ready for a breakaway Official. on the other side. And one of those things we oh, talk about as far as getting points and the turnovers. And this game has had its momentum swings early on. Let's send it down to Monica on the sideline. Thanks a lot, Monica. And the dance off underway in the Ramsey Center. We'll take a break as the Catamounts look to dance to a bigger lead when you come back.
Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Pride of the Mountains Marching Band. Certainly, probably not what the Mountaineers wanted to see is this place is packed in an electric atmosphere. has helped the Catamounts get to a two-point lead as Tawaski King and Michael Obata, the two big men for their prospective clubs, back in the ballgame. Absolutely, and Tawaski King needs to be careful. You cannot get that second foul. He's too important to this Catamount team, and there's still a long way to go. Obacha also the one for the Mountaineers. There he Tank is. Tank spot up again. Look out below. Nope. Couldn't get it to go. King the rebound. Back up he goes. The big hog molly on the outside. A big, big second chance bucket. Absolutely, Kyle. Just keep pounding it downside. Tawaski King has really stepped his play up from last season, and he's become a force down low to be reckoned with. And if you're Appalachian State, Tankowitz, a good enough shooter the first try, they cannot afford to give them second chance buckets. Obacha hammered as he goes, and it'll be an interesting call. Is it Tankowitz or King? It could be number two on King right there. I just said it a little while ago. It looks like it's Tankowitz, though. It will be on Tankowitz. A bit of a break there for the Catamounts as King and Obacha playing with one foul early on. And Obacha will go to the free throw line. A fairly good free throw shooter for a guy 6'8". And Kyle, from what you said, he's quite the athlete as you went to high school with him. First one off the back iron, no good. And I tell you what, in high school, he was a treat to watch. A playmaker, and as we've already seen, yes, he can score, but he's just as good on the defensive side of the ball. Second free throw, in and out, won't go. Obacha 0 for 2 at the line and free throws can either really help you or kill you in a game like this. And Western's really displayed some good team rebounding here. Although they do trail in the rebounding category, they, they're they swarming to the ball. There was good help defense on that last play despite the foul that was charged to Tankowitz. It was good help defense by King. They're doubling down, down low. So you're seeing some good things defensively and on the glass by Western. They're doing what they need to do to control this game. He leads hit the ball away, backdoor pass. And right on cue, Obacha making a play defensively, getting his hand in there and knocking it away. Catamounts will reset under their own basket. Summer will trigger the inbound. Boggs double teamed in the coffin corner. He'll dribble out of it. And reset the offense, eight on the shot clock. Summer brings it to his attention. Boggs going to work, fade away, jumper, tough shot, won't go. Summer the rebound, Sinclair tip it to him. And the Catamounts get a fresh 35. And these Catamounts are scrappy. They're undersized, but they're still controlling the glass. They're getting to the loose balls. They're winning the 50-50 balls. They're doing all the right things. They're hustling hard to, to put themselves in position to have this four-point lead. Healy, a big rebound on the inside as he had Brandon Boggs surging down his neck. Now he has the ball up top, almost walked with it. And now gets it over to Trice. And what a matchup that is. Trice on Sinclair. Two very, very athletic guards. Can't see to work. Won't go, Obacha grabs the rebound and he'll be fouled. And Obacha trying to fix the Mountaineers' woes on the glass early on. And that, and that was key early in the game was Appalachian pound to get down low. And they've, got away, they've gotten away from it and I don't understand why. But there you see it right there, the size difference is really starting to affect the Catamounts. You have Obachi, you can bring in Okam. So much size from this Appalachian State roster. I don't see why they have gotten away from that. If I'm Coach Capel, I'm taking it to the paint every single time. Bacha hits on the first. And maybe to help with some of that size, Preston Ross checks in for Tawaski King. 
And Larry Hunter playing a little chess match, big, small. And he and Coach Canley, they'll go back and forth here in this one all game long. Obacha misses the second, Ross the rebound. Sumler brings it across into the front court. King on Obacha, double comes to help. Ross kicks it out, Sumler. He'll drive baseline in trouble and he's fouled. As I believe that'll go on Trice. It will, that'll After be his, his second foul. And that could become a big factor later on in this game. And right away, you see his coach pulling him aside on the sidelines. Yeah, that was that call could have gone either way. I think the official did make the right call. He was not there set. However, you gotta like the aggressive defense. Yeah. Play inside, hard foul. And boy. It, I know it's not football, but there's plenty of contact involved here in this one. As Sumler shakes it off, says, yeah, I'm good. He'll walk back to the timeline before he shoots free throws. But so when you're playing in a rivalry game, you sort of have that mentality beforehand that, hey, we have to be physical so we don't get outmanned, especially down low. And that's how all rivalry games are. There's a little bit added edge. There's a little bit more attitude. There's a little bit more physicality. And you see it right there. There's no easy baskets and there's no easy fouls. If you're going to foul somebody, you're going to put somebody on their behind. And a stoppage in play is a loose up, or wipe up rather, some residue on the floor. And Sumler, a very good free throw shooter at the line for the Catamounts, misses the first. And Kyle, freshman Mike Brown is, is now just checked into the ball game and he sees his first action of the Appalachian State West Carolina rivalry. And what an atmosphere it must be, especially coming in on the road. And what is a hostile environment as Sumler hits the second. A lot of students showing up here along with the Pride of the Mountains marching band. Really a pleasure to be here along with you on Catamount All Access here this afternoon. Catamount's stingy defense throughout, and as Phil said, they have been scrappy throughout. Healy swing pass, Burgess sidestep. He got an open look, got it to go. And a nice move and nice ball rotation from the Mountaineers on offense. It was great ball, meant be patient, look for their best shot, and they got it. And then he didn't miss his opportunity when he got it. Great shot by Burgess. Good patience by the Appalachian State offense. Ross up inside, can't get it to go. Canty, a big board for the Mountaineers. And they'll come to the other side with a chance and Sumler takes it away. Sumler will take it himself high off the window, won't go. Ross the follow, and he tried to dunk it. Couldn't get it to go, and now it's a foot race. And a slam on the other end. Hamilton. As Hamilton finally put it down. And Phil, if you're pressing Ross, you have to make sure you get the two instead of going for the big slam. Absolutely, and he got away with a walk there, to be honest. He shuffled his feet and never took a dribble. And you could have preferred the turnover because then it wouldn't have led to a quick basket. And Burgess looks like he might be a little shaken up as Little John, he's come into the game and he may be small in size, but he plays a lot bigger than that 5'8 frame. Or I beg your pardon, Mike Brown, rather. Mike Brown's a, only a true freshman. He's very talented, very skilled. He reminds me of a lot of James Sinclair from last year. Long arms, very athletic, very scrappy, never gives up, never stops hustling. And so he gets his hands on a lot of loose balls, and he gets his hands he gets himself in the middle of plays that he probably shouldn't be. And the Catamounts huddle is Appalachian State. And Coach Capel will have to put another player in the ball game, as I believe a little blood was drawn. But in a game like this, as we've mentioned, don't mean to beat a dead horse, but it's no surprise. In a game of this magnitude, not only is it a conference game, but your in-state rivals in your own building early on in the season and this is the type of game, Phil, that can really catapult one team's season off to a big run to the middle of the year. 
Absolutely, and Western and App State are both teetering on that point. One team is three and six, being Western, the other one's one and six. So both teams are really looking to like really start pushing towards the second semester. Both teams after this game will have 10 days off due to the exams. So this is even bigger. Like who can gain that momentum heading into the second part of the season once exams have concluded? Keep in mind, too, as we get closer and closer to the new year in the middle of this season, you get in the flow of conference games, and especially in a mid-major conference, they are critical. The Catamounts, four games in four days. Last year in the tournament, they would love to get that first round by, but a lot of that starts with games like these at home. Absolutely, and you have to win conference games at home. You absolutely have to. It's a must. It's hard enough to win conference games on the road, so you, when the opposing team is in your house, you have to take it to them, and you have to get the victories when they are on your home turf. And a long time out here is the officials, I believe, are over at the monitor checking. I don't know what they could be looking for, maybe whether a foul should be intentional or not, but that's not stopping this crowd. Is They're still on their feet here at the Ramsey Center, and if you're Coach Hunter, Tied at 24, what are some things you really like from that so far here in the first half? Well, Western is not shooting the ball particularly well to this point. Uh, well, 52% is not actually that bad. <laughs> um, but however, three point field goal is only 28%. And we know that how reliant the Catamounts are to that three point shot. So 24-24 against a team that you are undersized, I think you're okay, you're, you're fine with it. I mean, obviously you'd like to have the, the lead heading into halftime. But despite the fact that your three-point shots are not falling and you are still tied with your rival Appalachian State, I think you have to be fairly satisfied. And finally, the official conference is over. Coach Capel gets the word for the Mountaineers. And they will get the ball. Catamounts exerting some full court pressure. They have to get it into Obacha before Healy's able to corral. And finally, they get it over to Canty, who brings it across the timeline. Lob pass, Canty inside, goes up strong. He's fouled and will shoot a pair. And that'll lead us to a timeout. Tied at 24. Who will get the push into the half? Find out on Catamount All Access when you come back. And welcome back to Pride of the Mountains Marching Band in attendance on being, normally it's the Cat House Band, but this time they decided to bring everybody for the occasion against the Mountaineers in the hardwood battle for the old mountain jug. And if you weren't with us for the women's game, Coach Spear talked a little bit about a rivalry. He said, it's different than your ordinary week. You spend the whole week prepping, especially in basketball, for your arch rival. You know it's gonna be physical. He said, it's all about getting your guys ready to play. Absolutely, there's a lot more emotion involved in rivalry games than typically a normal game just because of the caliber and because of the significance of a rivalry game. It's not just a win, you know, it's, it's beating app. You know, same thing Duke and Carolina, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Auburn, Alabama. It's more than just a game. It's, it's a year's worth of bragging rights. In this case, basketball, it's a month's worth because they will play again in January. The iron's unkind to Canty. Not a boon roll for him, that is for sure. Second free throw is good. Mountaineers take the lead, 25-24. As the Catamounts bring it into the front court, Trey Sumler. And Tawaski King will direct traffic, wants the clear out, gets it, takes Obacha, Healy the block from behind, and what good help defense that was. And we've seen great defense on both sides here. Most these two teams usually torch the nets, averaging 72 points per game each. And right now we have we're at 25-24 and, and the closing minutes of the first half. It's been a defensive battle, it's been physical, it's been a little chippy at times. But that's what you expect from these two teams. I'll pass inside and somewhere kicked it. As Eves tried to get it into Oakham. And Burgess will check back in for Eves. And both coaches, Coach Capel and Coach Hunter for the Catamounts using a lot of subs, keeping bodies fresh. So
So you can use anybody you want in the last 10 minutes or so of the ball game. Yeah, they know this game's going to come down to the wire. You can feel it. This is going to be another one of those App State Western great finishes where the game is going to come down to the end. So they're going to need all the fresh bodies they can get in the final minutes of this game. So that's why you see the frequent substitutions that we're seeing now. Loose ball on the floor. Obacha became the beneficiary, and App finally gets a 50-50 ball. And it's the freshman who gives him a spark. King doubled on the inside. Catamount swing around. Box will pull up for a jumper. And that's Brandon Boggs. And it's Boggs. really nice to see him. Sorry, Phil. It's no, really fine. nice to see him coming back into his own, especially with that jump shot. Absolutely. And that, that goes along with what I was getting ready to say. Is that's Brandon Boggs' shot. You don't really see him torching it from, the, from beyond the arc. You don't see him taking it all the way in. That mid-range game is Brandon Boggs' game. So the fact that he's... Finally starting to find a stroke is a great sign for the Catamounts. Canty tried to answer with a three. Couldn't find the bottom of the cylinder as again, the colorly rims unkind to the Boone Goons and Healy, a nice offensive board, keeping the possession alive and now he'll go to the line. Tankowitz set to check in. And we've seen phases this game for the Catamounts inside and outside. Preston Ross Tankowitz, Larry Hunter seems to be working that rotation very nicely. Yeah, and as of right now, I think this is one of his more athletic Ross uh, lineups that are in right now. Now with Tankowitz checking in for Preston Ross, I think this is the Catamount's most offensive uh, weapons as far as off weapons offensively is this lineup right here. Sinclair, Tankowitz, you can get you can get the points from all five guys. Mountaineers a two-point lead. Healy will make it three. And this game has gone back and forth. Plenty of lead changes. Catamount's biggest lead was six, as was Appalachian State. Somewhere. And a circus save, but Obacha there to corral it. Another 50-50 ball to the Mountaineers on what was almost a fantastic hustle play from Trey Sumler. Yeah, and that's one of the very few mistakes that Trey Sumler has made today is just being careless with the ball and dribbling it off his own legs. Catamounts looking to go on the break. Some will realize he doesn't have numbers and pulls it back out. Long pass, Boggs, dangerous pass, and now somewhere on Healy, and Healy will lay it in. And a timeout coming is Coach Hunter, irate Coach Capel, a double clutch fist pump, and then Appalachian State fired up a huge run for them with 138 to go in the half. Yeah, and Larry Hunter's just livid after that. That's just a dumb pass by Tankwich. You cannot make a cross, a lazy, lackadaisical cross court pass like that and expect it not to get picked off. That's exactly what happened. It led to two easy points for Appalachian State. You just can't have that. 31 26, and you can tell by the way the teams react to going to the sideline in this timeout. The emotion involved, two opposite emotions, but in a rivalry, that's what you expect, but if you think it's just another rivalry game, think again, it's one of the best in the Southern Conference. Yeah, and if anybody knows rivalries, it's Appalachian State's coach over there, Jason Capel. For those of you that don't know, Jason Capel used to play for Carolina, and he was involved in one of the most hostile college basketball rivalries, possibly the greatest one Duke and UNC. Keep in mind, Larry Hunter used to be an assistant at NC State at Wells, so they know all too well what big rivalry games like this mean especially in conference. And Coach Capel has made it clear from his first year in Appalachian State that his main objective was to consistently beat the Catamounts. They split every year he's been in Boone, somewhere underneath. Nice pass, King lost it on the way up. And now the Mountaineers on a break again. And Sinclair wrapped him up. And Appalachian State will go to the line. And middle part of the half, Western Carolina was winning the 50-50 balls now. App's getting a lot of loose balls, Philip. Well, we just talked right before our last commercial break. Who's going to make the push before halftime? And we're seeing Appalachian State emerging as that team that is making the push. They've created just a little bit of separation here, extending the lead to five. And by a little separation, that's how close this game has been. Because when you have a five-point lead, it's considered comfortable. But App's getting all the 50-50 balls. They're rebounding. They're playing defense. They're diving on the ball, diving on the floor for loose balls, and they're getting themselves to the foul line. And so the Appalachian State is beginning to make that push towards halftime. Mountaineers only two of six from the charity stripe here in this first half. Make it three of seven, but if you're Coach Cable, at, you got to be thinking we could be up by three or four more if we could make free throws. Absolutely. 
Summer will bring it across. Heavy ball pressure, Summer crossover to Ribble, fade away, jumper, won't go. Appalachian State wants to push, loose ball, Obacha, pump fake, he's fouled and it'll go to the line and he's fired up. Tawaski King, his second, and it'll be interesting to see if Hunter leaves him in there. As if he does, it'll be a big 46 seconds for him. Yeah, I think you go ahead and get him out. Um, with the 46 seconds left in the half, I don't think score-wise a great deal of things will change. However, if Tawaski King were to pick up that cheap third foul right before halftime, that could play huge dividends going into the second half. Obacha makes the first. A 33-26 lead for the Mountaineers. Their biggest of the night, and he knocks them down. And a little clutch of the fist as he had struggled from the line earlier in this game. Going just one of four, hits his next two. And I really like what I'm seeing from this Obacha kid. He's not dominating in one particular stat category. However, he's got numbers in all the stat categories, so he's spreading himself out very nicely. Get it into Tankowitz. They like that matchup. Going to work. Can't get it to go. Loose ball, and that there might is. be Tankowitz's third foul. Going for the loose ball. There it, it is. is. Number three on Tawashi King. Just what we had just said. Get him out of the ball game so that doesn't happen. And for the second straight battle of the Old Mountain Jug on the hardwood, Tawaski King in foul trouble at halftime. And Mendenhall, no, not Mendenhall. It'll be Brahmins that'll come in, but guys like Brahmins and Mendenhall, they might see some significant big minutes here in the second half with King saddled with the third foul. And they better get used to it. They're gonna get a warm welcome to this rivalry really by getting pushed in. Healy back in the line will shoot a pair with a chance to up the lead to 10. First of the one and one is good. Lead is now nine for the Mountaineers. And if you're Jason Campbell, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. You want to see your team make a push for halftime and really extend the lead heading into the intermission. And now he finds his team up by 10 on the on rival Catamounts. Capel will call a timeout. Catamounts will get one more possession. And an interesting side note, Phil. The Mountaineers are using a 30 In the last two timeout. games here at the Ramsey Center, a buzzer beater has been hit at the half. Whoever has hit that buzzer beater has won the game. Sumler did it a year ago, and Appalachian State did it in the moon a year ago. So it's, it'll be interesting to see if you're Larry Hunter, how do you draw up your last possession of the first half? I think you got to go with the hot hand with Trey Sumler. So if you cannot get to him, draw something, something up for Tankowitz. Tankowitz's range is anywhere in this gym right now. So I feel like if you're Coach Hunter, you got to look for something to get to Tankowitz or to Trey Sumler. Whether it's similar isolation taking the ball to a basket, or if it's Tankowitz finding him as he comes off the screen. Boggs will inbound Appalachian State. Issues a soft press as he brings it up the timeline. 15 seconds in rolling. Sinclair has the basketball up top with 10. Men and hands off Sinclair. Tankowitz, he'll try the three, can't get it to go. Burgess will try three quarters court. He's into the cat head, that'll take us to the half. A big time half for Appalachian State, a 10 point lead as they go to the locker room. And that was a good look right there by Tom Tankowitz. It was definitely there, he just didn't convert. But like you said, Jason Cable's gotta feel good with his team up by 10, heading into intermission on your rival. And when you come back, we will have Coach Q one of the assistant coaches for the Catamounts when you come back to Catamount All Access, presented by TV62. Your score of the half, 36-26, Appalachian State. And we welcome you back to the Ramsey Center. Halftime well underway. They're introducing the academic honorees from the Catamount Athletics. And in that first half, especially toward the end of the half, Appalachian State really got going shooting the basketball. Absolutely, Kyle. And they really did that in two ways. Number one was transition, where they forced turnovers and were able to get these easy baskets. They got in transition. 
able to get some easy baskets. Number two, free throw shooting. Catamounts have only, there are two of four from the free throw line, while the Mountaineers are 10 of 15 from the free throw line. So really the difference in this ball game has been frow shots. And the Catamounts, what do they have to do offensively to get that rhythm back that we saw earlier in this game? I think you gotta go inside outside approach like they were doing at the very beginning. However, with Tawaski King having three fouls, we may not see him at the opening of the second half. But if we were to, I think you gotta get the ball to Tawaski King. They've been doubling him when he did get his touches. Therefore, that leaves people like Tom Tankowitz, people like Trey Summer, James Sclair. It leaves them open and by themselves on the three-point arc. If you're Coach Capel, what is your message? Your team up by 10 on the road hey, against your arch rival. What is your message to your team in the locker room at halftime? Keep doing what you're doing. For the most part, what you have going on right now is working, playing great defense, holding this, this high-octane Catamount offense to only 26 points. You're turning the Catamounts over, and you're out-rebounding them. So if I'm, if I'm Coach Capel, I'm saying stay the course and keep doing what you're doing. And early on, your leaders for the Catamount scoring-wise, Tankowitz has seven, Sinclair and King with five. A little bit of a surprise, Trey Sumler only three points, one of six shooting in the first half. Yeah, they, this Mountaineer defense has really done a good job of bottling him up. And we knew that could be a potential because of the because of the hype that is surrounding Trey Summer. I mean, like I say, he put 27 on this Mountaineer team last year in this same building. Jason Cable's not going to let that happen again. So you know he has his team well coached and well prepared okay. for this matchup. And they're going to do everything they can to bottle up and suffocate Trey Summer to, to prevent him from getting going. Because everyone knows okay. Trey Summer gets going, the supporting cast will follow suit. We will have a report from Monica Papworth on the sideline momentarily from Coach Q. But if you're Coach Hunter, your message to the Catamounts at half. Keep fighting, hustle, and rebound. Oh, okay. You're undersized and you're outmatched down low and in the paint. You must buck up and you must rebound. It's not going to get it easier. Try to stay out of foul trouble and really just eliminate these dumb turnovers. And Trey Sumler, he's done a good job on the defensive side of the ball. King and Tankowitz have stepped up, but with King with three fouls, Catamounts really need somebody else to step up offensively. Yeah, we've already seen Josh Mendenhall, and we've, always, and we've already seen Torian Brummett. We may see Kenny Hall here too. You may have to see a uh, big man by committee here in the second half to prevent Tawaski King from picking up a fourth foul. So you may see Hall, Brummett, and Mendenhall really carrying the load, Ross as well, carrying the load for the Catamounts on the inside. And we talked about in the season debut against Mars Hill how deep this team looked this year. That will be tested against their arch rival Appalachian State here this afternoon. And Appalachian State smooth, especially the last five minutes. They really took ownership of this basketball game. Yeah, Appalachian, and they didn't do anything like unusual or spectacular. They just they stuck to the baskets and stuck to the fundamentals. Good defense leads to turnovers. Turnovers leads to easy baskets. Catamounts take the floor. They will hope to get some of those easy baskets that the Mountaineers beneficiary off of. And momentarily, Monica will be down with Coach Q over there on the sideline. And we will have that interview for you as soon as he comes out of the tunnel. And this is a team, energy, they have to come out firing here in the second half. Absolutely, Tom Tankowitz and James Sinclair, they struggle a little bit shooting the ball. Shooters gotta keep shooting, you will find your stroke. So if you're Tom Tankowitz, if you're James Sinclair, if you're Brandon Boggs and even Trey Slumber, you have struggled to this point, but you don't give up, you don't abandon your ship, keep going. And don't forget the crowd that we have on hand as well. And a big time advantage, the sixth man, and we'll send it down to Monica Papworth. Thanks, Kyle. I'm here with Coach Q. Coach, what are some things you look to improve going into the second half of this game? Um, in the second half, we're looking to improve to, to execute a little bit better than what we did the first half and also to limit those guys in second chance opportunity uh, when they're shooting the basketball. And also the hustle hustle play. It seems like they've been getting all the, the loose balls, the um, the steals that we should be getting. We should be getting those, man. So those are the two things that we be trying to work on. Awesome. How do you guys plan on getting that rhythm back that you had the first half of this game? Um, uh, like I said, first time, executing a little bit better, but also, too, playing our role. Those scores, stepping up, being the scores, 
getting Trey Semler, um, getting him to get inside the paint a little bit more, getting Tawaski King the basketball, allow him to have some freedom, some movement in there. But also getting Tommy, Tom Tangles, getting him ready, getting him going so he can get going. So get those guys in a good rhythm so we can get some easy scores. Definitely. Thank you so much. Good luck in the second half of this game. Back to you, Kyle. Thank you, Monica. And Coach Q putting an emphasis on getting Trey Summer some freedom, and they want to see him get the ball a little more on the inside. And Coach Q inside with Trey Sumler. That's his message. They also want to get Tawaski King more involved offensively. Those were his and Larry Hunter's keys at the half. Absolutely. And Trey Summer, for the most part, has been guarded by Burgess, an undersized guard. So I think if you Trey Summer, post Burgess up when you can. When the opportunity is there, take it. There's not going to be a whole lot of opportunities because of the amount, the amount of tension that he gets. So Trey Summer, you got to hit your open looks when they're there. you got to take advantage of situations. And taking advantage of situations will be Paramount. Can the Catamounts come out firing when you come back to Catamount All Access presented by TV62. Again, your halftime score, 36-26, second half, right after this. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. The Catamounts and Mountaineers set for act number two. And you thought the first half was physical. Phil, you expected to get more intense and more physical as the game goes on. Absolutely. Half number two, like you said, it's time to amp it up, especially from the Catamounts, because now you got to play catch up. So absolutely, you got to amp up the physicality, especially to, to <laughs> Tawaski King, on the other hand. Needs to just tone it down. He is in the game right now, and so you cannot pick up your fourth foul beginning because that would just leave a huge hole in his Catamount roster. Tawaski King starting the second half with three fouls. Remember, a year ago in this venue, he was also in foul trouble. Trying to handle Isaac Butts. This time he's got freshman Michael Obacha. Backdoor, Healy sucks away Tawaski King, and... What a rejection that was. What an athletic play that was, too. Tawaski King and how strong he is had that thing cranked way behind his head, and Healy still knocked it away. So great athleticism and great awareness, really. Great help team defense. That's what the Mountaineers have prided themselves on all year long. They've done it well tonight. Healy for three. That won't go. A botch of the rebound. Ross on the inside. Tankowitz blocks it away. Catamounts looking to push. Sinclair thought about the quick three. And now they'll get it back to Summer. They'll settle in the offense. Missed an opportunity right there. Uh, Tawaski King had his man bottled up down low and had position on him. Sinclair missed him. King can't hit the jump shot already. Catamount's trying to make an emphasis of getting him the ball on the offensive end. But they had, Mountaineers, they, go ahead. They had success there at the beginning. And so, like I said, at halftime, get it, by getting the ball to Tawaski King, and if he would have create some offense for him. That's going to draw attention from Appalachian State. They're going to begin to collapse him, collapse on him. You'll see double teams. That will leave people like Tankowitz, Sinclair, and Summer alone on the three-point line. Obacha free on the inside. He lays it off the window. The lead is now 12. King asking for the ball down low. Summer can't get it to him. And if you're Appalachian State, that's a foul you don't want to have. A little touch foul by Tab Hamilton. Yeah, it was just unnecessary. Trey Sumler's 40 feet from the basket, and you give him, a, give him a foul. And Phil, it didn't even look like he was in the act of making a drive to the basket either. Just looked like he was trying to pull it out. But at any rate, Catamounts get a fresh 35. Sumler into Sinclair, who will go to work on the low block. Has it knocked away, recovers. Tankowitz spots up from the outside. And a well-executed offensive position inside out. Tankowitz knocks down the triple. Like you said, inside and out. Find Tawaski on the inside when they double down and collapse on him. People like Tankowitz are going to be alone all by themselves on the three-point line. So that right there, might have, Tankowitz may have given the Catamounts the shot in the arm that they needed. Back to single digits. The lead is nine. Beep. Beep. 
Hamilton. Now Healy has Swaski King way out from the basket. Matchup wise, Obacha now being guarded by Preston Ross, who just fouled Canty shooting a three point shooter. And Coach Hunter will be one of the first to tell you rule number one do not foul a jump shooter. Yeah, but let's put a little asterisk next to that foul because, Kyle, this happened right here in, in front of me and you. And I don't know how you saw it, but it didn't look like much of a foul. It looked like a lot of ball by Preston Ross, but nonetheless, three shots for Canty. Canty at the line, he'll shoot three. First of three is good. And an area where Appalachian State thrived in half number one. From a numbers standpoint, not necessarily a percentage standpoint, they're back there early here in half number two. It's easy points. Clock's not running. Don't have to play defense, don't have to play offense. Easy points. Somebody fouls you, you go to the chair, you try to be knocked down. Extend the lead now to a potentially 12. Knocks down all three. Canty's perfect. Lead back up to 12 for the Mountaineers at 41 29. At the 17 20 mark, Ross. Foul. It'll be a block as Ross takes it strong right at the freshman. And an interesting matchup change Coach Hunter had at halftime, switching Ross against Obacha rather than Tawaski King. And I know exactly why he did it. It's because you cannot have Tawaski King picking up that fourth foul this early in the second half. Also, Preston Wall Ross is, Obacha is a little bit more athletic than Tawaski King, a little bit quicker too. So by downsizing, you allow Preston Ross's athleticism and quickness, maybe a better matchup for the Catamounts with having Preston Ross against Abachi. Ross at the line for two free throws. First, no good. And the free throw shooting woes continue for the Catamounts, only shooting, coming into the game shooting 66%, and only two of five for today, so the Catamounts are really struggling from the charity stripe. Ross banks in the second. Reverse psychology right there, Kyle. Lead 11, Catamounts exerting some full court pressure. Sinclair almost created a steal. And Trice almost walked with it in the backcourt. And Trice, for the most part, has, has had a very quiet game. And this is a guy who scored 21 big points against the Catamounts last year in the same building. So he, for the most part, has had a quiet afternoon. He and Sumler both. Trice now backing down Sumler. A good matchup that is. Trice getting the better of it. And knocks down the bucket. Appalachian State with their largest lead at 13. And that was Jamal Trice's first basket of the game. Obacha knocked it away from King. King very aware that time and not chasing that loose ball as it headed out of bounds and picking up foul number four. Yeah, and it looked like Obacha was trying out his Hollywood skills right there as he acted a little bit, trying to get that fourth foul on Tawaski King. However, the official did not see it that way. Sinclair with the ball on the wing. Sumler tried to go into the meat of the Appalachian State defense. Sinclair dribbles around it. Fade away. Count it. King Sinclair. That's a tough. And he's a player that can lift the Catamounts back into this ball game. Absolutely. Just like Sumler, just like Tankowitz, Sinclair can also catch fire at any point in time and really just go on a run all by himself. And that right there was a tough shot. Fading away from the basket and to the left. Still knocks it down. Big shot for the Catamounts. Stops the bleeding a little bit momentarily. Try stubble, can't get it to go. Healy can't get the tip in. 50-50 ball, out of bounds. Catamount basketball. Slowing in for the Catamounts, number 24, Brendan Bonds. And Coach Q talked about wanting to get some of the ball inside. It looks like the Mountaineers are happy matching Trice on the inside against Sumler on their offensive possessions. And absolutely, these two guys seem to be canceling each other out. You know, Trice is capable of scoring points just like Sumler's the heart and soul of this Catamount team. Neither one of them are scoring particularly much. They just really just cancel each other out. And so I think, the, I think Jason Capel and the, and the Mountaineers are okay with that. By, by taking out Sumler, you make the, the supporting cast beat you. Box can't get it to go. And Appalachian State the rebound. Pull-up jumper on the way. Back iron, no good. Tankowitz, a nice box out of the shooter. And the Catamounts get the ball. Nobody picks them up. 4-3. Count it. And a breakdown by Coach Capel's team. Tankowitz walks it up the court and buries it from the top of the key. 
Yeah, and I don't know how you do that if you're Appalachian State, the most dangerous three-point shooter in the building, and you just don't even you just don't even bother looking at him. And just like that, the lead down to eight. Canty, when Appalachian State is in trouble, that is their go-to man. He does it again here. And that was just too easy right there. If you're the Catamount defense, you got to you forced him baseline, which is good, but you got to force him to the middle of the paint because that's where your help is. King absolutely mauled inside. He'll go to the line as Obacha wrapped him up. That'll lead us to our first media timeout. We're right where we started half number two. Mountaineers up by five on the Catamount. All access presented by TV62. And welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Catamounts have cut at eight. Appalachian stretch at the 13. But the Catamounts seem to do a much better job getting the ball in the interior and having more efficiency offensively. Yeah, they've been having success when, when Tawaski King is getting his touches. And as you said, both teams really playing even right now. Catamounts going a little bit run. Appalachian erases it. At some point, Catamount's got to turn on the switch. You cannot play even if for the rest of this half. It's going to catch up. At some point, you need a four-minute span where you, get, where you go on a 7-0, 9-0 run to get yourself back in this game. And Tawaski King will try to start that at the line. He's at the line to shoot, too. That's another area the Catamounts have visited the charity stripe already as much this half as they did the entire first. And you've got to convert these free throw opportunities into points, especially when you find yourself down by 10 with a little with a little more than halfway to go in the second half. Catamounts, it's, it's a great way to catch up. I mean, clock has stopped, it's free points. So this is this the Catamounts have got to take advantage of these opportunities. King with a second. Gets the Ramsey roll. And the lead is nine. Catamounts again with some full court pressure and Appalachian State turns it over. And those are the types of things that can start to turn a basketball game. Wasn't much pressure, but Sumner got in there just enough to annoy Burgess and create the turnover. And momentum is, so, is, so precious, is such a precious thing in college basketball. Right, you say you had to you had a make free throw and a turnover. Maybe, oh uh, well, Tawaski King did not convert that. Looked like he might have forced it a little bit as Hamilton will get it back to Burgess and Appalachian State. Goes back into their offense. Oh, come on, King, who actually has a size height advantage. On King, pick and roll. Trying to isolate Tawaski King, get him number four. King doesn't abide. And the seven foot footer, Oakham, is looking for the ball, and he's had position a couple times to get that fourth foul on Tawaski King, but his teammates just missed him. King boxes him out. And takes the rebound. Sinclair, a pump and go. Now he finds King. King missed Boggs underneath. And the Catamounts will set up the half-court offense. Boggs, jump stop, off the window. Brandon Boggs starting to come alive for the Catamounts. He's had a decent game so far tonight. Absolutely, and this might be his coming out party right here. He has not played well to this point this season. So this right here, getting some confidence, making some shots, may, may benefit him later on. Lead down to seven. Inside, Tankowitz challenged, and he's not happy with that foul call. call Oakham will go to the line, his and Oakham 0 for 2 foul. so far from the strike today. So if you're going to foul a guy, not a bad guy to foul, but a good challenge despite the foul from Tankowitz on the inside. And Tankowitz didn't like the call, but he definitely hacked him across the arm. And it's like you said, it's not a bad foul. Oakham here is already 0 for 2 on his foul shots, and. I mean, that was a surefire dunk right there. So by fouling him, you prevented the dunk, and he already missed his first free throw. So as you can see, already a good foul by Tom Tankowitz. So as a coach says, you get your money's worth for it as you take at least one point off the board as Oakham gets set for the second. Second's no good. King has it wrestled away. Sinclair out of bounds as I believe it was Canty who got in there and poked it away from King on the loose ball. Appalachian State gifted with another possession. And really a missed opportunity right there for the Catamounts. You get away with a foul and he misses both free throws. However, you're unable to corral the offensive re or the defensive rebound. 
Good defense from Sinclair. Kenny can't get it to go. Sinclair has it poked from behind. Looks to save. Boggs has got it. Tankowitz spots up for three more. No. King the rebound. Thought he got fouled. No call. Loose ball on the floor. Bodies everywhere. And, and there's the chippiness and right here there. Here we go. Look out, ladies and gentlemen. Tawaski King in the middle of it. And the crowd absolutely loves it. Welcome to the Battle of the Old Mountain Jug, as almost expected here in a game of this magnitude. It was only a matter of time. We knew it was going to happen. We saw it last year and the year before. We knew it was only a matter of time before one person threw that elbow, that slight kick, which is what happened there, to really stir up the Hornets' nest. And so now it may be chippy for the rest of the way. And Coach Capel wants an explanation. One ref talking to Coach Capel, the other Coach Hunter, as they wipe up the floor. We'll try to sort all this out, and Coach Hunter yelling at Brigham, saying, hey, stay on the bench. We don't want to get a sideline warning. Catamount basketball. No foul was called. Some are going to work in the post on Burgess. Jump shot won't go. Canty a tough rebound. Hamilton drives to the rack. Offensive foul. Boggs was there in time. Good call by the official right there because those was absolutely an offensive foul as Burgess low the shoulder. I tell you what, Phil, the Catamounts may not have gotten any points out of that skirmish on the other end, but it has fired this place up here. And this crowd is alive at the seven point game and 13.50 to go, or 12.50 rather, here in the second half. Yes, right, Kyle. Still plenty of time left in this contest. Sumler has it one-on-one -on, -one on Burgess again. Here comes a screen. Sinclair now baseline. Tough pass. Boggs. Fade away. Jumper. Count it. He's on fire. Somebody get a fire extinguisher. He's feeling it right now for the purple and gold. And Boggs just absolutely abused that defender. Hit him with multiple pump fakes and spin moves. And when it all said and done, the crowd is back in this. And the Catamounts have cut this lead to five as Jason Capel has now called a timeout because he feels the momentum swinging here. And listen to this crowd, timeout. Appalachian State, 12-13 to go. And the Catamounts have cut it to five. And they're really using this Ramsey Center and the sixth man to their advantage as this place is about to erupt, Philip. Yeah, this place sort of fell asleep towards the end of the first half and the beginning moments of the second half. But right now, after that little skirmish, like you said, the Catamounts got nothing out of that skirmish. There was no foul call. There was no points scored. However, they got the momentum. And just like that, they're on a 7-0 run that really has gotten them back in this ball game. And Tawaski King, who is in the middle of it. Yes, he has played hard and aggressive, but it really seemed to fire up number 24, Brandon Boggs. How about the back-to-back -back possessions drawing the charge? and then taking it to the rack on the other end. Absolutely, in the pregame show earlier, we talked about how Boggs or Tankowitz needed to step up and be that third scorer, and both of them have done that today, especially Boggs. He had been struggling for most of the season, hasn't really played to his potential, what we saw from him last year, but it looks like that he has finally woken up and understood his role and is starting to put it together at the right time. As you said, it could be a coming out party for him, and what a place to do it at home in front of a pretty full house here at the Ramsey Center against the Mountaineers in one of the biggest early conference matchups that we can remember here in our time here at Western. And if you're the Catamounts, what's the message to keep the intensity up and the foot on the gas pedal? Absolutely. I think the message is just that. Keep the intensity up and put the foot on the gas. And if you notice it, Tawaski King has really picked up his intensity but has avoided foul trouble here in the second half. So when he was playing more laid back in the first half, he was committing fouls. He's amped at the intensity. And the Catamounts have really just played smarter this second half. And they, they call it a smart, aggressive defense. That's what the Catamounts have exerted here lately. Burgess and Appalachian State will try to quiet the run. Looking for help. Twosky King out on the perimeter. Healy will try a three and will quiet the crowd. A big shot for the Mountaineers. And it looks like Jason Capel's 
uh, tar uh, timeout right there really paid dividends as they were able to draw up a play and got the ball to Nathan Healy. Boggs can't get it to go. Tip won't go. Loose ball underneath. And it'll go to the Mountaineers. Timeout on the floor. Mountaineer basketball when you come out. Come back, rather. And don't go anywhere, folks. This one's just getting started here at the Ramsey Center. And we welcome you back to the confines of the Ramsey Center, 11.36 to go. Mountaineers lead by eight. And Appalachian State used that timeout. Healy hit the big jump shot. Seemed to really settle them down a little bit. And that's exactly what Appalachian State needed. They had gotten a little off of their game. The Catamounts were feeling the motivation. They were feeling the momentum. The place, there was juice back in the, the Ramsey Center. So right there, Healy was able to quiet the crowd. Burgess with the ball for Appalachian State, brings it across the timeline. Somewhere for slight pressure in the backcourt. Oakham the ball out high. And Appalachian State will have to pull it back out. Shot clock down to 10. Skip pass and Oakham will go to the line. Another strong attack, and the pick and roll has worked beautifully for them here in this game. Absolutely, that, that pick and roll was textbook right there. However, not a bad foul by Brandon Boggs, sending Oakham back to the foul line, who is 0 for 4. So it may not be a bad foul here. Oakham at the line, shooting into the teeth of the Pride of the Mountains marching band in the background. trying to extend the Mountaineer lead back to double digits. First free throw is good. 49-40. And Sumler switching Tankwitz and Sinclair on the baseline, preparing for a potential rebound. Second free throw, my goodness. I'm not sure what that was. Good Lord. <laughs> and this crowd's not really sure either. It took them a little while to react, but my goodness. That might have been the ugliest thing I've ever seen, Kyle. <laughs> Call up Sports Center, not top 10. That, that was ugly. <laughs> that was embarrassing, absolutely. I'm embarrassed for him. King going to work. And a foul underneath this. Looks like it's going to be on Oakham, who about pulled King on top of him, which I wouldn't think his defender would be a bargain by any stretch of the imagination. But you talk about free throws getting more and more paired up with 10.51 to go. Five team fouls for the Mountaineers, pass deflected, out of bounds, and a good thing if you're the Mountaineers, Boggs was cutting down the baseline. Yeah, if you think about it, that foul right there wasn't particularly smart by Oakham on King, and then earlier in the year, Earlier in the half, we had a foul from uh, Hamilton where he fouled 
Trey Sumner 40 feet from the basket. And so now you start to see these fouls pile up, like you said, five team fouls. A couple more fouls, the Catamounts are going to be shooting one-on-one -on -one and potentially double bonus the rest of the way. Sumler off the pick and roll. He'll drive, try to finish with one hand and does. They said they wanted to get him the ball inside. He's starting to get active in the paint. A nice floater there. Absolutely, and that now gives him five points like by similar stretches of is uh, underachieving. However, that right there might get him going. Reach in foul called. I believe it'll be on Sumler. On Canty going to the line. Beg your pardon, they'll call Tankowitz on the block. And I think that really is just a nightmare matchup for Tom Tankowitz. He's undersized. Canty is much more athletic and much quicker off the ball. So that right there, that matchup plays in Canty's favoritism. And Canty's been a nightmare matchup for about every team they have faced so far. But a rare miss from him at the charity stripe. And this is an area as this game continues to go. Seven points, 10 minutes to go. Free throws are going to become more and more critical. Appalachian State has struggled a little bit from the stripe in this half. Absolutely, Kyle. Most, most close games do come down to free throw shooting. This one certainly has the looks of heading in the same direction. So it's going to be interesting to see which team can lock it in and focus on the foul line. Hogs now comes around a Tawaski King screen. Sinclair found some space, buried the jumper. Give them all three of those. And the lead is five yet again. And the Catamounts refuse to go away. Hanging around, Kyle. Hang around, hang around, hang around, and give yourself an opportunity to be in it at the end of this game. And the Catamounts have proven, not just against Appalachian State, but in general, them hanging around at home is a dangerous thing. King denied. Oakham in the rack. Give the Catamounts the basketball back. Absolutely. That was more like a double block. We saw Tawasi King and Tom Tankowitz get their hands on the ball right there. Great team defense by the Catamounts. And Larry Hunter off the bench and guiding his offense. A huge possession this could be. If the Catamounts can get it within a possession, this place might explode here at the nine minute mark. Absolutely, the Catamounts have done just what they needed to do. They, they did just enough to hang around and now they have put themselves in the position to turning this into a one possession game. Sumler fouled, shooting a three. And we saw them do it to Canny earlier. Mountaineers, Mountaineers return the favor. Hamilton, Hamilton again, a couple bonehead fouls for him. Absolutely, and that's the cardinal sin in college basketball. It's fouling a good free throw shooter while he's shooting a three point shot. Five, that's just dumb. Clock a stop. Three. Great opportunity now for the Catamounts to, to get this game within two. Summer will have three chances at the charity stripe. Pauls orchestrating the student section over on the far side. First one is short, no good. And the free throw shooting woes continue for the Catamounts as now Sumler has even been bitten by the, by the free throw shooting bug. Sumler still with two more, second is good. Lead Hunter down to four. four Obacha comes Obacha in for Oakham. And Oakham, he's had his woes and Obacha seems, while smaller, to be the better matchup against this Catamount roster. Sumler gets two or three. The lead is three, full court pressure from the Catamounts. He'll lead to inbound. And timeout, Mountaineers, good defense. And expect more of the same. The full court pressure has gotten to the Mountaineers a little bit here in the second half. Yeah, it's forced a few unnecessary turnovers that have played in the Catamounts' favor, allowed them to get some few points in transition. So if I'm Coach Hunter, I'm sticking with the full court press. It seems to be working. 30-second timeout, we'll say here. And if you're Coach Capel, what are you telling your team right now to try to settle them down for essentially the fourth quarter of this basketball game with nine minutes to go? Well, if I'm Coach Capel, I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm taking the ball down low. That's what worked at the very beginning of this game, and that's how they were able to create some separation before halftime. So I think if I'm Coach Capel, I'm going to drop a nice little play. 
and get the hands into a get the get the hands get the ball into the hands of Obachi or Canty on this possession. We alluded to it in our pregame. This game often coming down to the final possession or two, and the Catamounts in position to do that yet again. Only down three at one time this half. They were down 13, 8:50 to go here in half number two. Canty looks, finds nothing. Sumler matched up on him. And it looks kind of obvious what Appalachian State's trying to do. They're trying to get the ball into Obacha. But good, good defense thus far by the Catamounts on bottling him up. Trice with two on the shot clock. He's going to have to put up a tough shot. Won't go. Sumler the rebound. Ahead to Sinclair. Can't get it to go. Tawaski King the follow. The lead is one. And almost like the hook and lateral off the window, King cleans up the garbage on the back end. And that was textbook defense by the Catamounts here on the other end to really cre cre create that transition opportunity. And how about Canty? Quiets the crowd with a monster three. Canty right there stopping the bleeding for the Mountaineers and giving, the, giving them a four point lead. Tankowitz with the ball, now Sinclair. Lead is four. Sumler, crossover dribble, got his man in the air. No foul called. Timeout, 7.39 to go. Four point game, buckle your seatbelts. It's gonna be a wild ride to the end here at the Ramsey Center between the Catamounts and Mountaineers for the battle of the old mountain jug on the hardwood here on Catamount All Access, presented by TV62. Including Trey, how many WCU basketball players, men's basketball players, have scored 1,000 points or more in their career? A, 26, B, 32, or C, 40? What's your guess? All right, Josh is guessing 40, and that is correct. Congratulations, Josh. You just won a Catamount basketball. And welcome sure. back to the Ramsey Center. Catamount basketball. Phil. This crowd is really starting to become a part of this ball game. Absolutely, they were, for the most part, they were relatively quiet. And then at the beginning of the second half, because the Catamounts were fairly boring, but uh, definitely have picked it up here, got a lot more interesting now at the closing minutes of the second half. 53-49, Mountaineers lead. That lead was once 13. Somewhere the inbound. Boggs has it far side, he'll come across. A big part of why the Catamounts got back in this game. A huge few possessions back to back for him, offensive and defensive. Somewhere way outside, halfway down and out. Loose ball foul. And they will get it on Boggs, his second. And the 15 foul on WCU. And the foul situation. Appalachian State, 16 fouls. Catamounts with five. Again, full crowd, full court pressure rather for the Catamounts stretching the floor in this Appalachian State attack. Trice, blocked by Tankowitz. Ahead to Sumler. Obach is not gonna catch him. Foul, high off the window. And they want an intentional foul. We'll see if they get it to him. No, it'll just be a personal. But if you're Obacha, smart foul, making sure the ball doesn't go in. Absolutely a smart foul, especially since Trey Summer overall has really struggled offensively today. And he's already missed a couple free throws as it is. So that's not a bad foul by Obacha. You don't want any easy baskets at this point in the game. Somewhere at the line will shoot a pair. First is perfect. The Tom lead is now three. Two, Hamilton, Hamilton comes back Ryan in, at a, as does Oakham. Looks like Coach Capel wants to rest Obacha and Trice for that final push late in this ballgame. 
Absolutely. You sit them down now. You put Oakham out there just to eat up a couple more minutes of time before you put them all in for the final stretch of this game. As you said, it's gonna, this game's going to come down to the wire. Typical, typical rivalry between Western and App. Interestingly enough, Tawaski King with three fouls. Not only has he not picked up a fourth, he has played every minute in half number two. He's played a lot smarter this second half as he did the first half. Healy again, a look, can't get it to go this time. Ten points, a big rebound. And the Catamounts have really, has really tightened up defensively here in the second half. King asks for the ball on Oakham. Gets the ball, goes to work. Drop step, turn around jumper, got the roll. We're tied at 53. And the emotions in this place are at an all time high here tonight. A new ball game with 6.15 to go. Keep feeding him, keep feeding the big fella. He's getting to the free throw line. And if he's not doing that, he's converting offensively. Keep getting Tawaski King the ball. Appalachian State seemed to play slower on the offensive end than they did a half ago. Nothing but air for Hamilton. Sumler wants to push again. Sinclair for a triple. In and out. Tankwitz, the loose ball. Sumler, or Sinclair rather on the floor. King again. That won't go. Appalachian State finally comes away with it. Burgess on the break. Hamilton high off the glass and in. Yeah. Timeout, Mountaineers. Bird just got away with an offensive foul right there. Clearly lowered the shoulder and even used the forearm to create some space. He got away with one there. 30 second timeout. Five and a half to go. We'll take a quick break with him. 55 53, Mountaineers on top. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Mountaineers with a two-point lead. Catamounts with a basketball. In what we have another barn burner here between Appalachian and Western Carolina. And Hamilton, I believe, will be called for another foul. Interesting. Obacha, who checked out of the game, he has four fouls now. So both bigs, much like a year ago, in trouble. King with three, Obacha with four. Sinclair to shoot that bonus that the Catamounts have earned here in this half by being aggressive, getting to the basket. And this is an area that the Catamounts can really take advantage of and capitalize on this opportunity. They're shooting free throws the rest of the way. So with the clock stop and still behind here, this is, this is the opportunity right here where the Catamounts can make that push towards the end of this game. Sinclair made the first, perfect on the second. Again, we're tied. Five, 17 to go and rolling. Burgess can't shake Sumler. They get it to Canty, no surprise there. Going to work. Jumper won't go, King is fouled. Oakham went around the edge and poked it out, and the crowd's going to let him know about it. And when, here we see it, free throws, free throws, free throws. Appalachian State dug themselves a hole by committing a lot of dumb fouls early in the second half, and now they got to reap what they sow right here as the Catamounts are going to shoot free throws the rest of the way. This right here, as I said earlier, is how the Catamounts can put themselves in position to win this ball game. you got to hit your free throws. Like we said earlier, small things, free throw shooting. Western Carolina has not had a lead since about the eight minute mark in the first half. They do now. 5.03 to go, Catamounts on top by a one. And we talked in the first half how King, especially in that championship run a year ago, was really clutch at the charity stripe. He's clutch here, two of two at the line. And that is a sight for sore eyes seeing watching the Catamounts convert free throw shoots because it looks like they are starting to put it together from the foul line as they struggled early on in this season. But it looks like they have now figured it out, realized the importance of foul shooting, especially late in the ball games, and are now starting to capitalize on those opportunities. Sinclair bumped Canty on the way by. So, as you said, free throw contest. Canty now will try to answer what Sinclair did at the other end and tie this ball game up. 
as the Catamounts lead by 257-55, 445 to go. In and out, no good. And the Mountaineers in the second half have started to struggle a little bit from the free throw line. And it might have to do with the 300 some odd people behind the backboard. Fancy good on the second. The pride of the Mountaineers marching band really wreaking havoc back there. More than just your 30, 40 member cat house band on a regular basis. Oh yeah, and they're a very unforgiving bunch. So anytime <laughs> You go to the free throw line, they don't miss an opportunity to get inside your head. One point game, Catamount lead, 4.33 to go. Somewhere up top against Burgess. Feeds it to King again on the low block. King, no double, turn away, won't go, loose ball, Trice is there. Mountaineers now look to push. Burgess pulls it back out as Coach Capel says, let's slow this thing down. And you almost get a sense that even though they're down one, they want to milk this game a little bit. Burgess spots up for three, no good. And Boggs is wrestled down, jump ball called. And we will take our final timeout. 3.55 to go. Catamounts by one. Mountaineers with a basketball when you come back. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center, 3.55 to go. Mountaineers trail by one. They have the possession area, arrow, why they have the ball now. After this, the Catamounts will have possession, which could be huge in a tie-up situation. And pause, director of the Pride of the Mountains marching band in that timeout. Appalachian will inbound it. Trice, a wide open look, buried it. And that just, that just cannot happen. Coming out of a timeout, you cannot lose a man like that to an open look from beyond the arc. And just like that, the lead, the lead has changed. Two-point Mountaineer lead now. Ross goes to work with the left hand. As the Catamounts try to space out the Mountaineer defense. Somewhere on Burgess. Nice crossover move, feeds it back to Ross. Ross to the rack, he's fouled and will shoot a pair. Preston Ross will go to the line. Today he's one of two from the stripe with two big ones here with 3.20 to go. And if you're Coach Capel, Phil, how long do you keep Obacha on the sideline with that fourth foul? I think you got to put him in now. Um, well, you could probably wait a little bit longer, but not too much longer. I, you got a, you got a lead right now, but the Catamounts are not going to go away. And they're still getting themselves to the foul, foul line. I think Obach has been a tougher matchup for Tawaski King, so I think you can't wait too much longer before you pull the trigger. Ross, one of two, a perfect 50% in this ball game for him. Catamounts trail by one. Back and forth they go in the down the stretch. Battle here at the Ramsey Center. Healy, he'll get a clean look, can't get it to go. Ross mistimes his jump, Healy got it back. And a late foul called. And Coach Capel 
irate at Haley that he didn't take it strong to the basket. Yeah, and that looked like a good uh, Oscar job right there by Healy. It didn't look like there was too much contact between him and Preston Ross. However, he acted a bit, sold it to the official, put himself on the free throw line for an opportunity for two. Healy at the line, a perfect five of five today. See if he can improve on his team. Six of 11 mark this half. Versus good. And Kyle, we've spent all this time raving about Obacha and Canty and Trice. And what we haven't realized is that Healy has had himself a very quiet 15 points, eight rebound game. So he's been the silent assassin for the Mountaineers here. And he's really become key, especially late in this ball game. Healy misses his first free throw. Loose ball, Sinclair finally runs it down. Keeps the lead at just two. Tankowitz will one up him with three. A little nylon. Tom Tankowitz, a big shot. And there was no hesitation in Tankowitz whatsoever. He knew once he got his hands on the ball, he was shooting it. Summer the steal. Catamounts in the front court. King underneath. Hammered, and he'll go to the line. Catamounts lead by one, two, 33. Tawaski Clutch King with a big time play underneath after a dynamite shot from Tinkowitz from long range. And the Catamounts have a chance to add to a one point lead. And this free throw opportunity was started by no other than Trey Summer, getting his hands on the ball, diving on the loose ball, finding Tinkowitz who found uh, Tawaski King up under the basket. King, another clutch. Clutch free throw. Three of three in the last five minutes for him in this basketball game. The lead is two. Obacha back on the floor for the black and gold. And we knew it was only a matter of time before Jason Capel had to had to swallow it and say, I gotta put him in. You gotta play him, it's getting too close. And if you're Larry Hunter, it wouldn't surprise me a bit to see King go right at him the next time the Catamounts have the basketball. No question about it. Next next opportunity, send it down to Tawaski King and see if you can get a botch out of the game. Two of two for the big man, 63-60. Catamounts keep the pressure. Crowd chance defense, it's a three point Catamount lead. 22 to go, and Phillip, it doesn't get a whole lot better than this. Absolutely, and that's just what we knew it was gonna be. We knew it was gonna be a down to wire matchup like this. Crowd's getting back into it, and these two teams fighting neck and neck. Appalachian State, the answer. The lead is one. And there's Tawaski King getting positioned on a boxer right there. You gotta feed it to him. Boggs, a three, no good. He had an open look. And now the Mountaineers a chance to reclaim the lead. We're under two minutes to go. Not sure if that was the best shot for the Catamounts. That was very early in the shot clock. I would have let the play go out a little bit more and then see if I could have found Tawaski down kick low. Out three, no. Sinclair, a huge rebound. And we'll play on with about 95 seconds to go and rolling. Similar walks it across the timeline. Summer skip past the King, who hands it back. Summer down the lane, scoop the do, pounded out a foul. How do you do, Mr. Trey Summer? He is walking up from hibernation. And we knew it was only a matter of time, Kyle. You cannot keep that man quiet for too long. And he is being your junior, senior leader. He is being your most experienced player. And what you want to see in a point guard, controlling the game, taking the ball to the hole getting himself fouled and taking it to the line. Healy's third foul, and a chance to make it a two possession game. Not a soul on their seat. They're all on their feet here at the Ramsey Center. Buries it. Timeout, we'll take them with them. 1.19 to go, listen to this crowd. Well, 
Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Everybody on their feet, 119 to go. Somewhere a huge play to get a two possession lead for the Catamounts. Absolutely, and it's gonna be interesting to see if the Catamounts stick with the pressure that's, that they've had success for so far in this second half, or if they try to be a little bit more conservative and drop back a little bit. It'll be interesting to see what, what Hunter has in store. If you're Coach Capel, your strategy on this possession. Canty, where's Canty? Get the ball in his hand. He's been your playmaker and leading scorer to this point throughout the season. He's your main man and he's your most veteran scorer. You gotta Canty. get you gotta find Canty. Canty with 20 for the Mountaineers. Trice to Healy. A good shooter. He's double. Skip pass. Guess who? Canty! A right-handed Stefarino. I'm actually psychic, Kyle. <laughs> Under a minute to go, Catamount still with the lead. Summer looks to milk some of this clock. With 17 on the shot clock, about 40 on the game clock. Now he goes to work. Tankowitz inside the box with nine. Boggs looks, spin move, can't finish. Out of bounds, and I believe it'll stay with the Catamounts. Only three seconds still on the shot clock, so you gotta find a good shot and it's gotta be quick. Three on the shot clock, 28 on the game clock. Tankowitz, for three, bang! I don't believe what I just saw. Almost clutch. Trice, a tough shot, won't go. Summer the rebound. The Catamounts lead by five. Finally, he's fouled. The roof is about to explode off this building. And how about this? Keaton Cole step aside. Tom the Tank is in the building. A huge three. And that's exactly what we've been waiting for him to do, Kyle. We talked about in the pregame show how Tom Tankowitz and Brandon Box have sort of plateaued and not really it's been the Trey Summer and Tawaski King show. It's been the exact opposite today. Big play from both Boggs and uh, Tom Tankowitz. Summer missed the first. No matter what, it will be a two possession game. The lead is six, 11 seconds to go. Appalachia needs a three. It's gotta be quick too, you can't waste too much time. Six. Healy will try it. Nothing but air. The Catamounts are going to roll the 2 and 0 here in the Ramsey Center. This place is going bananas. And that's all she wrote, Kyle. That is it. The Catamounts are now 2 and 0 and have really solidified themselves at the top of the Northern Division now in the SOCON. This is huge, not only from a rivalry aspect, but just where it sets them up for the remainder of conference play. Another Ramsey Center classic. And in a moment, we will try to find Monica Papor somewhere on that sideline as this place is absolutely going nuts. And how about your reprieve from finals week as the Catamounts make their victory lap around the Ramsey Center, your final. 70 to 64, and if you're the Catamounts, a huge, huge way to get to 2-0. Absolutely, Kyle. We talked about the importance of winning conference games at home, and that's what the Catamounts have done now, stealing one on the road at Furman, and now improving to 2-0 by knocking off your rival. They're really just adding to their miserable season that they're having to this point. Another classic here at the Ramsey Center. When we come back, Stay tuned for the post-game show. Caleb Brother for the woman, Trevor James, and Jake Meyer for Philip Jackson. But for your in-game crew, I'm Kyle Rush for Philip Jackson. We enjoyed bringing you another Old Mountain Jug Classic. Have a good night, everybody, and stay tuned for the post-game show coming up right after this.
Welcome to the Catamount All Access post game show presented by TV62. Caleb Rutherford alongside color commentator Phil Jackson and basketball analyst Trevor James. We're going to send it down to our sideline reporter, real quick, Monica Papworth. Monica, take it away. I'm Monica Papworth reporting for TV62. Thank you, Monica. Phil, what a game. After a first half that, by some accounts, was some of the worst basketball that had ever been watched in here. I mean, the Catamounts really rebounded in the second half, fighting back from a 10-point deficit. I mean, what can you say about that? Absolutely, Caleb. And they, and they did the little things that we noted to at the beginning of the pregame showed what they had to do. Second half, they limited turnovers. They forced turnovers. They also hit their free throws once they got into the bonus. They were in the one-on-one -on -one from about the 10-minute mark on and then they got into the double bonus towards the end of the game, and they really took advantage of those opportunities. They did the small things that we said that they had to do in order to win this ball game. And the Catamounts 10 of 13 from the free throw line in the second half. Trevor, you talked about Tom Tankowitz. What a huge three-pointer there with three seconds to go on the shot clock. I mean, that was something you tell stories to your kids about. Tom Tankowitz coming through in the clutch. That was a great possession. I had a feeling the ball was going to go to him. Uh, they basically sealed the game with the Catamounts up by two off the inbounds. Uh, just an overall great, great effort from Tankowitz. 19 points on the day, five of eight from three. Hey, I told you, you got to watch out for him out there. He's a great job. He's one of the good ones. I was talking to Corey, our high cameraman, and I told him that we needed a three, and if it was going to someone, it was going to Tank. And Phil, let's go back to the first half. What went wrong in the first half of the Catamounts? Well, for the most part in the first half, the Catamounts played even with the Mountaineers. And then the last four minutes after that last media timeout, it's like they fell asleep, started turning the ball over, not playing good defense, got out-rebounded. And then Appalachian did the, the complete opposite. They hit their free throws, got out in transition. And we're able to build on it. It's like they fell asleep. The energy in this building was gone. And just the Catamounts took a nap. But then they fixed that quickly in the second half. They really did. And a 10-point deficit is certainly – not something that's easy to overcome, something I did earlier this week against Illinois. And Trevor, talk about what you saw as far as the physical part of the game. These teams were beating each other up most of the game. It was it was a very intense game. Uh, a couple of close calls where it looked like there might have been some skirmishes or some technicals thrown out there. But this is something you can expect in a rivalry game. Obviously a heated environment. Uh, a lot of emotion into the game, as you can see late in the game, with the game being uh, still for the Catamounts, a lot of emotion around here from the fans and the players, and that's just something that goes into a great rivalry like App State versus WC. Certainly a very physical game, and Phil, who's your player of the game? Player of the game, I'm going to have to give it to two of them, Brandon Boggs and Tom Tankowitz. At the beginning of the game, we talked about Third score, the Catamounts needed a third score. We knew Summer was gonna get his numbers and we knew Tawaski King was gonna get his numbers. However, until the last few minutes of this game, Summer wasn't getting his numbers. And therefore, Boggs and, and Tom Tankowitz had to step up. And that's exactly what they did. They both found the rhythm. Boggs was hitting his mid-range jump shot, which we've seen him do. And then Tankowitz found the stroke from beyond the arc. So I think the player of the game has to go to those two guys. They had to pick up Summer's slack until he finally caught up in the second half. And I believe you correctly predicted those two in the pregame show for needing to step up, which hey, that's pretty impressive. They did step up in the second half. Trevor, who's your player of the game? Player of the game, I'm going to go with two players, a close second. <laughs> I'm going to give it to James Sinclair, a great hustle player, 12-7 and seven on the day, at leading in rebounds, or he was up there for the Catamounts at guard. Showed a lot of hustle and effort, emotion to the game. But player of the game, um, no holes barred, got to go to Tanglewitz, clutch three to seal it, 19 points, 5A from three, he did his thing today. Absolutely a great shooter and one that, as we said in the pregame show, if he gets hot, he's one that you got to watch out for. Well, that's going to do it for us for the Catamount All Access postgame show. Your final score, Western Carolina 70, Appalachian State 64. For Kyle Rush, Monica Papworth, Bill Jackson, and Trevor James, I'm Caleb Rutherford. Thanks for watching. Everyone have a good night.